Now, I don't know which camp you're in, whether you're in the titanium camp or the steel camp, but by the time this video is over and I have shared my very subjective impressions of both of them, hopefully we'll come to the conclusion that all frame materials are amazing. Let's just go ride our bikes and love all over each other. All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new here, my name is Lewis Scott. I'm an avid cyclist. And what I've been doing on this channel for the last couple of years has been taking modern steel frame bikes, building them up with modern componentry, then taking them out there to do faster spirited group rides and seeing if I can get them to approximate the performance of a modern carbon bike built for performance, namely my Colnago V3RS. And I've posted a number of videos which I'll share a link to so that you can kind of come up to speed with what the channel has been about over the last couple of years. To my returning viewers, you know what this is, is the Blackheart Road Tie. And the Blackheart Bike Company in California recently reached out sent out this titanium bike, which is their modern interpretation of a performance bike made out of titanium for me to demo on the channel and share my impressions. And that's exactly what I have done. And I have documented that process. I'll post a link to those videos as well. But today what we're doing is we're going head to head titanium versus steel, no holes barred. But before we do that, I've got to apply a filter. There's an outlier in here. It's my Bianchi Pinella. This bike cannot be included in evaluation because I have too much of an emotional attachment to it. Over the last couple of months, I have not spent a lot of saddle time on the Pinella because I've either been riding the Thai build or the Dark Star, which is in the background, more on that bike build in a minute. And when I got out there on the bike, I was like, man, this bike is still amazing. I love it better than any other bike. So if you were to tell me to pick one, you know, my prejudice is gonna come in in every evaluation as it relates to the Pinella, so I'm taking it out of the equation. Instead, representing the steel corner is my Dark Star. It's a modern steel frame made out of Columbus spirit tubing with modern build attributes like a tapered head tube to stiffen up the front end and a press fit bottom bracket to stiffen up the bottom bracket junction for acceleration. And it's a bike that performs ridiculously well. In fact, I recently took that bike on a Grand Fondo, but I digress. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna value these bikes in my subjective feel, which is like, how does the bike feel when I first get on it? How do the bikes perform riding on the flats? Whether I'm riding solo, small group ride, fast group ride, double pace line, single pace line, Peloton, we're gonna talk about all of those characteristics. I'm also gonna talk about the handling characteristics of the bike in terms of how they perform in group rides, change of direction, cornering. I'll talk a little bit about climbing as well. And we're going to talk about comfort because that's the thing that people who advocate for both of these materials say is that they both are supposed to offer all day comfort. Well, we're going to talk about frame compliance as well. All right. There's a lot for us to get into. I'm excited about this. Let's jump right into it. All right, let's start with getting on them. When you get on a Dark Star, it is long and low, but it actually feels more relaxed. The road tie has that tucked over feeling at first. It reminds me of the cab forward automobile designs from, I believe that was like the late 1990s, but I'm able to adapt my position on both bikes without issues. Now, I would prefer the Dark Star's position on longer rides, while I think the road tie would be my preference for shorter, more intense type rides. Launching, both bikes take off smooth and assuredly and they track straight. They both transmit your power efficiently, but the road tie feels like it does it better. It's not like the Dark Star is a noodle, but there's an immediacy and an eagerness to the road tie that the Dark Star simply does not have. Now, when it comes to rolling easy, both bikes exhibit really good manners at lower speeds, which is actually a thing. <laughs> and I have been on bikes that were twitchy at low speeds, then settled down as the speed picked up. Moderate speed behavior in a civilized space line is a bit better on the Dark Star because it is less eager, but the road tie is not far off. It's not like it catches you out at low speeds or anything like that. There is definitely more speed creep on the road tie as you start to apply power through the pedals. I don't know if it's the aero attributes, but it is consistently one miles per hour or so faster than what it feels like for the similar effort on the Dark Star. The road tie will give you toe overlap at parking lot speeds, but I believe that issue could go away with a different fork rake. My wheelbase analysis shows that the road tie is shorter than my other bikes because of its 
front to center measurement. Wheelbase for the Dark Star is 98.7, on a road tie it's 97.6. Chain stay lengths are virtually equal at right around 41 centimeters. So there's an approximate 1.1 centimeter difference in the front to center, and with my big old feet, that's enough to cause me having a little bit of toe overlap. Like I said, but that only manifests itself at parking lot speeds. Now let's talk about cruising on the flats. Metal bikes have a reputation for uh, air quotes, <laughs> holding speed. Now both bikes fly along, hold speed. <laughs> they hold speed well and will definitely put a grin on your face. They are both well-mannered. Other than the road tie kind of feeling a little bit faster, you really can't call the difference between the two. When it comes to hard acceleration, I'm definitely giving the performance nod to the road tie, but not by much. And anecdotally, the Dark Star definitely feels better doing it. I can't explain why, it just kind of does. Maybe it is a surprise element of it, but when the Dark Star springs forward from acceleration, it is wholly unexpected. You, don't, you definitely don't see it coming because it doesn't have that frame rigidity. Well, the evident frame rigidity that the road tie lets you know it has. Now, when the double pace line gets sloppy, and becomes more of a peloton, the road tie is your weapon of choice. It's simply a better tool. It gets into those tight spots and disappearing gaps quicker and just handles that situation better. Not twitchy or trigger happy, just very capable. Next up, road compliance. And it's a no contest, folks. <laughs> the Dark Star will shake your cavities loose. The road tie mutes or dampens or floats over or whatever cliche you want to use, it just titaniums. It's really kind of unbelievable to experience. And you know, as I was riding both bikes, I was wondering if 28 millimeter tires would make a big difference on the Dark Star because the Dark Star is on 26s. However, my Bianchi Mega Set, which is definitely not part of this test, just like the Pinella is not part of this test, but my Mega Set ran on 25s and would simply glide over that same piece of tarmac. So it's definitely got something to do with the build characteristics of the Dark Star. On a really responsive bike, cornering is that thing you do with your hips. It's how you lean the bike, you engage your hips, your core, your legs. Some bikes are less responsive to this and I have to get my shoulders or my upper body involved more. This is what the road tie does. The bike corners well, but I have to force it. This is not natural to me, especially when I'm flying along in a group and it's not something that I am particularly fond of because it gets in my head and I have to think. Once I'm done wrestling it, I can get it to do what I want it to do. But the Dark Star, has wizardry levels of handling. I don't think or have to remember to press in. The bike just responds. I don't know if it's better in that regard than the V3RS, which is a really neat handling bike, but certainly is as good. Cornering, that goes to the Dark Star. Now, when it comes to climbing, unfortunately, the road tie has been limited to overpasses and the Key Biscayne Bridge, which I'm actually gonna feature this ride and this climb in an upcoming video. And I think it maxes out at five or 6%, not really sure. And at the end of a long day in the saddle on this particular ride, it climbed well. I believe the bike would climb and descend well in just about any situation. The Dark Star fortunately went along with me to a hilly Grand Fondo recently in Panama. And I actually have videos of that full ride coverage that I'll link to so that you can check that out and the bike did climb very well. At no point of that ride was I feeling like I made a mistake in bringing this steel frame. My fitness was actually more of a liability than the frame material. Climbing between the black heart road tie and my dark star steel frame is a tie. I'm calling that one a draw. And lastly, we've got to mention the aesthetics. That bling factor. One of the biggest reasons cyclists buy the bikes that they buy is so that we can look at them. <laughs> now, both bikes will start a conversation with strangers. 
People seem to want to touch the road tie, but they just kind of look at the dark star with a puzzled look in their eyes. But which do you prefer? Titanium goodness or steel? It got a little steamy in here. <laughs> We're gonna have to bring the temperature down. It got a little bit too grown and sexy. We're still talking about bikes and evaluating the difference between a titanium bike and a steel bike. Let's talk bikes, Lewis. Okay, that was a lot of fun to do. It kind of went pretty much the way how I expected it to go in terms of characteristics displayed with the exception of that bad out of hell acceleration that the Blackheart Road Tide displays. I was not expecting that. The other thing that was quite a revelation, well, not so much a revelation, more of a confirmation, is that the differences that wheel and tire technology is making in terms of how bikes feel and respond and what you get back in terms of feedback, it's making it harder to discern the differences. The characteristics in some cases are still there, but it's just getting like what the feedback that you get, the wheel and tire technology is muting some of that stuff. So that was interesting. All right, uh, time for me to say which camp I'm in. Am I in a tie camp or the steel camp? If I had to choose between the two bikes I evaluated today, I'm gonna to go with the black hard road tie simply because of its nod to modernity, the integration, the aero attributes, the future proofing, things like that. And when I talked about some of the handling characteristics, primarily what the bike does when you get it to corner, those are things that if this was the only bike I had and I was riding, those things would disappear or I'd get used to, you know, we kind of like adapt to the way how our bike performs after a while. I only notice it because I'm bouncing back and forth between different bikes and being able to say, well, this feels like this, this does this, and this is what I prefer over that. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. But I need to know where you're at. Are you in a tie camp or are you in a steel camp? Let your voices be heard in the comment section. This is going to be a lot of fun. And let me know what your experience has been with both frame materials, especially if you've had an opportunity to ride both. So that's it for today, boys and girls. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel by watching these videos, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And as always, our aim here is to inform, instruct, inspire. Be blessed.